channel. Uh, this is Lee Allen Presents and we are doing another unboxing video as you've already seen from the card. I am Alan. Leanne is off to the side. She's going to be my glamorous assistant today, but much like the magician, you never see what's happening behind the scenes. So you will not see Leanne in this video, or rather these videos. Which brings me on to one quick thing before we start. This, it's going to be a multi-part video because there's so much, I mean, as you can see here, the boxes are freaking huge. They are just massive. They are weighty, chunky boys. They arrived this morning, uh, this afternoon. Um, I think, what time was that? Yeah, they arrived this afternoon and I've been itching to get into these. So we've just had dinner and I'm going to crack into them and obviously open them and, and, and show you guys what's, what's what. Um, this video, the part one of this video, which will be the general unboxing and most likely the core unboxing of the, the core uh, game of the uh, Marvel United X-Men game, it's a hundred video. One hundred videos we've put out on our channel in the last like 11 months. Um, 116 subscribers as it stands right now, and some of the view figures on our videos are much higher than we ever anticipated. So. This is going to get repetitive if we do this all the time, but we are going to do it anyway because we appreciate you. We want to thank everyone who's watched our videos, who's subscribed to our channel, and who's pushed us to make 100 videos. We would have made videos regardless for friends and family and, and other people that we know who wanted to see things like this. But without everyone else watching and subscribing, liking, commenting and chatting to us, you know, Leanne had a good chat with someone on our Bardsung unboxing video the other night, um, which which is really nice, you know, and that wouldn't have happened in in, an, in another situation, in another sort of situation, you know. So thank you to everyone. Um, to say this will be a hundredth video, probably going into 103 by the time all this is done. Well, I'm anticipating a four part, much like the Nemesis uh, original Wave 1 shipping uh, video that we did last, I think it was June or July-ish. Um, so this is going to be quite a big video. So the reason <clears throat> I got this game here, this is already open, This we already had this one, this is Marvel United. Um, it's done by a company called Simon or Come On, I don't really know different people say it different ways. It basically stands CMON, Cool Mini or Not. They are famous for doing the Zombicide games. Um, they've done a first edition, second edition, many different um, expansions. There was a Marvel Zombies Zombicide game, which was a Kickstarter recently, which I think they hit something like six or seven million dollars worth of funding on that one. Um, but before that, they did a Marvel United game. It's very... Uh, as you can see from the, the cover out there, it's almost like a, a stylized chibi kind of um, art style to it. This originally was on Kickstarter. We didn't know about it at the time. Um, it ran from February 11th, 2020 and ended on the 5th of March on the same year, 2020. The original goal was $150,000 and they ended up making $2,866,168 with a total of 21,290 backers. Now, we saw this one last year. Uh, this one started April 14th, 2021. So less than a year ago, as we're recording this now, ended on May 6th, 2021. Um, it's it's seen as a core standalone, uh, like, a, like a sequel of sorts, I guess you'd call it. And obviously it's X-Men. You know, you can see on the box, blatant big writing there, big logo X-Men. So that's what that is. So this is the original game and the core game for X-Men is in this. So we went all in and got all the X-Men expansions, but during the... Uh, um, pledge manager stage, I couldn't think of what it was called, the pledge manager stage, we added on the original expansions as well. So we already had this, even though this wasn't included in the uh, pledge manager, it was only the expansions and the stretch goal and stuff. For some reason they didn't include the core box, not quite sure why, but it didn't matter to us because we already had the game anyway. So just going back to the, like I did with the breaking down of the previous one, so X-Men needed $300,000 to be successfully funded. It ended up making $5,988,089 with a total of 25,404 backers. There's only like 4,200-ish four like 4, uh, more backers than the, the first campaign. My assumption would be that a lot of people did the same as us. We went all in on the extra stuff as well, which is not obviously cheap but one expensive it is what it is you know you pay for board games you get what you get you know so i'm gonna hand this off to my glamorous assistant <clears throat> one last thing i will say before um you're gonna lose the top of my head in a minute because i need to stand up to open the box but one last thing i'll say before i crack into these is that this wasn't due until may this is the first time i've ever seen a kickstarter be shipped not one month but two months early like what so great job simon so, I've got Mr. Slice. I'm going to stand up so you're going to literally just not see me, uh, my head as it were. I'm going to 
do like we do on all our videos. I'm gonna slice open the outer shell and show what's inside as a, as a sort of a brief uh, overview, as it were. If I can get this into the tape, this is very thick tape. And then we will take a short break. I'll look at which way I want to unbox everything and show you guys everything. And then from there, I'll start recording from a seated position so you can see everything. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to... This one sideways here, like so. Ooh. And then I'm going to slice the other box open, just so I haven't got to take a break in between those. And then I can put Mr. Slice into semi-retirement, because he's going to be just set for that for a minute. Okay, wow, that's a lot of boxes. <clears throat> 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19 boxes. Technically 21, because there's some small ones as well, which we'll get into uh, in a minute. Um, okay, where do I start? <laughs> I have no idea where to start. Okay, core box. Okay, so we've got, first off, core box for uh, the X-Men Marvel United game. So there's that one there. Um, I need to... Just, <laughs> we're going to start a big stack of stuff here. So then we've got... I'm going to go through the X-Men stuff first, and then I'm going to go through the... Original Kickstarter. I'm going to turn this box because so it might get a bit easier for me. Next up, we've got X Men Blue Team. Um, I was very anticipating this one. Mr. Sinister is one of my favorite villains of the X Men series. It's a superb character. So there's the Blue Team. Then we've got Gold Team. Um, one thing to note these are slightly smaller than a normal board game box. A normal board game box would probably come to about there. So it's a little bit smaller, but um, kind of makes it a bit easier to store. It makes it a bit easier to store. <laughs> so that's gold team. Then we've got. Uh, da, 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 where are we? Let's do that one. Okay, then we've got the Deadpool expansion. Which I believe, if I remember rightly, has Deadpool riding a unicorn. Yes, it does. Unicorns and Deadpool. What would you need? Okay, back over here because all the other big X Men stuff's in this box. We've got. Oops, that's upside down. We've got Days of Future Past. Um, I think these ones have the Sentinels in it. It's quite a thicker box than the other ones. If I just grab one of them ones back a sec, the thinner ones. Just to show how thick. It's probably a double the thickness. So I think there's Sentinels in that one. Then we've got... <clears throat> Phoenix 5. So there was a point... Was it four, five, six years ago maybe? Where the Phoenix took over five of the individual mutants. And kind of started them down a dark path. I can't remember exact specifics, but was, I remember it being really enjoyable. Next, we've got X-Force. Cable. Everyone loves a bit of Cable. And Strife, who's a clone of Cable. Spoilers. It's another one I was looking forward to. This, I think this is the first expansion they announced, actually. It was the Horseman of the Apocalypse. Um, I have very fond memories of the Apocalypse saga from the X-Men 90s cartoon. That was one of my staples growing up as a youngster. Um, I used to love watching that in the mornings, on the Saturdays. Then we've got First Class, so this is a throwback to the original 60s uh, comic book. So the original sort of vintage outfits, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch included. Then we've got... <clears throat> oh, this is a chunky one. This is all the stretch goals. <coughs> That's a very thick box. This will be all the different stretch goals, so as... Anyone who's familiar with Kickstarter knows um, when they start hitting monetary values, they'll give away more free stuff. So like if you hit, uh, let's say a million dollars, for example, they'll give away uh, Strife or, or Deathbird, whoever. So they, they did that and they, there was a lot of them. Just a quick, quick, quick flash of the back there. There's a lot of models in this one. Um, that's called the Mutant Promos Box. Oof, that's a hefty one as well. Okay, then I think... That's just the plastic tokens. So these will be the same tokens across the original and the X-Men um, game. So instead of using the cardboard ones, this plastic one's a bit more robust, a bit durable, and they kind of interslot into each other to make it a bit easier to keep a track of them. So I'm just gonna double check. I've not got any more X-Men staff. This one was in the X-Men campaign, but it is a Fantastic Four box, which I was surprised about when they launched this one. I was like, hang on a minute, Fantastic Four? Okay, I guess I just kind of see the links with Namor, fair enough, but yeah. So this is um, interesting. It should have some really good stuff in this one. Doctor Doom's always been a favourite villain. 
and then we've got two exclusives which you can only get from the Kickstarter. We've got Storm Mohawk variant from Days of Future Past. And we've got Leanne making loads of noise with a cardboard box. <laughs> and we've got Old Man Logan as well. So there's one model in these with 12 hero cards in each box. So these can only be attained if you back the Kickstarter when it was running. I don't think you can get these anymore through any late pledges or anything like that. Pass off to my glamorous assistant. <clears throat> okay, so then we've got the original expansions for the game which I showed you just now. Oh, excuse me. First up is Tales of Asgard. So it kind of says on the box, it's Loki, it's Thor, it's the Asgardians. Then we've got Return of the Sinister Six. So again, it kind of says what it does, it does what it says on the box. Dr. Octopus, you've got Electro, Sandman, Craven, Vulture, etc. This one's intriguing to me. Uh, the Infinity Gauntlet, because I'm pretty sure this one comes with a like a pretty big gauntlet piece, which is interesting. I'm not quite sure how that's going to add to the gameplay, but it's going to be fun finding out. One thing that we really enjoyed about this game is quite easy to just pick up and play. It's not too complicated, it's not too elaborate, but it's enough to keep you invested in what's going on. Then we've got Rise of the Black Panther. Uh, three more boxes left in this box. We've got <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy Remix. So I think Remix is just a play on the words of the, the music stuff that uh, they kind of link into it. Then we've got Enter the Spider-Verse. I've seen some of these models being painted. I'm in a, a group on social media for this game and some of the paint jobs I've seen have been absolutely tremendous. And then the last box again, it's a chunky one because this is all the stretch goals from the original game. And this, as I say, this is the Marvel United, they call it the Promos box. Um, so again, just a quick flash of the back. There's a heck of a lot of figures in this one. There's going to be a lot of cards in it as well. Yeah, so we've got 35 hero pieces, 11 villain pieces. So that's uh, 40, ah, uh, math, 46. 46 characters in this box, 420 cards. Oh, that's a lot. Cool, right, so what we're going to do now is we don't like to cut our videos. We like to have everything go through, no edits, no cuts like that. But if you've seen any of our unboxings where they're sort of to this size, you'll see one cut uh, in one video um, in that sense that we'll now go, we'll stop this recording, we'll... Oh, Leanne's wrecking the place. See, we're not going to cut that out. We're not like that. We want to make this as natural as possible, and that's the, that's what we want the appeal to be. We are natural. We don't care about perfection. We are human. We make errors. We make mistakes, and that sometimes makes for some of the best entertainment. Sorry. Look, look at all the times Rags has jumped up and wrecked stuff. You know, we've not cut it out because it's entertainment, and that's what we're in the that's what we're in this for is to make something entertaining. If we put a smile on your face, if we make you smile and happy, or for whatever reason. For one of our videos, that's 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 our job done, you know. Um, what was I saying? We're gonna have a cut in this video. Oh yes, that's right. So yeah, we're, much like the Nemesis and the Bardson ones, where we had to unbox everything first and see what we we're unpacking first. We're gonna do that now. So we're gonna take a quick break. You'll literally be away for like two seconds, if that. We're gonna go for probably a few minutes, try and figure out what we're unboxing and what order, and then we'll be back with the video. So we'll see you after this very brief commercial break. And we're back. Here's Mr. Slice, ready to do his thing again. So I've got an action plan. I hope it's gonna work. I hope this doesn't lead to ridiculously long videos because we're very conscious of the fact that a lot of people don't want to see long videos unless they're looking for something specific. If you're just browsing to this and it's like three hours long, you're not going to watch it, which is why we put it into parts. So enough babbling. I'm going to start cracking into these boxes, starting with the core box of Marvel United X-Men. <clears throat> Whew, feeling a bit out of breath today. That's fun. Okay, here's the start of more plastic. It's quite fun is that Bardson arrived, what, three days ago? Uh, yeah, there's been a lot of stuff arriving this week. Just gonna put that there. So, we've got obviously a little brochure for Simon games or Kimon games, I'm not quite sure again of what you want to call it. Marvel Unit Rulebook, obviously. Don't know how to play the game without the rules, right? Um, punch boards, 
We'll say we got the plastic tokens. These probably won't get used much unless some of the, the tokens like this one and this one may not be in the plastic ones. I'm not sure, but I'm assuming they would be. I don't know. We'll find out later on. Ooh, hello. I do like the way they've colored these. Okay. Then we've got location tiles. Slight bendage on that. That's not too bad though. Break that off. There it goes. So these are the locations that you can play um, in in the game. Um, these are quite random, generally, and they have different things on the bottom there, which lead into how you play the game, basically. So it's just a quick overview of some of those, because again, we don't want to sort of sit here and say, hey, here's 400 cards, here's every single one of them. That's going to make for a very dull and boring video. Then we've got <clears throat> villain dashboards. So we've got, that would go like so. And then for example, if you're playing against Magneto, that would go on the top there like so. So then once you've done certain things, you unlock different things, um, but these then would be the villain cards themselves. Juggernaut, Mystique, Sabretooth, and obviously good old Mags, Maggie himself. Then we've got, ooh, okay. Again, so we're just gonna do a quick, quick, quick show of the cards. So the back of the card shows Wolverine and starting hand on it. And then on the other side, this is what your typical card looks like on the playing side. So this one means the beast in this he's playing this card has one movement and one action or attack um, to use on this turn. Oh, I'm starting to see some of the complaints about the boxes actually. In the first box, that's clever. So there's the villain cards. So the villain cards get their own cards to play, like an AI, as it were. And then these are the cards which go on the bottom of the villain deck, uh, the villain dashboard, rather, to say what's what, or how many things you defeat them, whatnot. not. Got this weird cube, like a, a silver cube. Not quite sure what the relevancy on that is. In the original core game, that was the cosmic cube. I'm just going to pull all these out a sec just to show one complaint that a lot of people have been having with the boxes which is unfortunate it seems it's very flimsy plastic and it's just kind of almost sh like, like impacted somehow even though the box is in perfect condition i don't quite understand how you can just impact on something like that i don't know um but thankfully the top end that holds the models looks intact so there's that <clears throat> so i'm just gonna put the dashboard in that back a sec and then we'll get on to what we're all here to see the models okay. um one thing we don't have yet because it is arriving separately is the neoprene mat um they have said they're not shipping it with the pledges they're shipping them separately why i don't know maybe they're not ready maybe they're too heavy because these were heavy already and neoprene mat neoprene mat can get pretty heavy, but they will be arriving at some point. I doubt we'll do an unboxing for it, but when we do a game, like there's a few gameplay, we're obviously going to do loads of gameplay videos of this, but we might try and just at one moment just go, hey, here's the neoprene mat to arrive, here's a closer look of it, and show off to, to show you what it looks like. So, first up in the models, we have good old Shape Changer herself, Mystique. And this is in purple. So, there's three different colours for the models. There's purple, there's blue, and there's red. Not quite sure as to what, I mean, I would say the purple will be the Brotherhood of Mutants, but Sabretooth's in the Brotherhood of Mutants in the books, so that doesn't really track. Um, speaking of, here's the leader of said Brotherhood of Mutants, good old Maggie himself, Magneto. Maggie. Um, one thing I'll say for Kaman or Simon games is the bases are always incredible. Just all the detailing with the extra bits, you know, there's, they didn't have to, they could have had that as a plain base. But instead, they've put like the, the, the beams and you can see the little nuts and bolts and things flying around Magneto's cape. It's, it's phenomenal um, craftsmanship on it. Okay, next up, we've got Jean Grey. <clears throat> and again, you've got this. Um, I'm not quite sure what that is. Is it smoke or is it water? I'm not entirely certain what that is um, on the base. But you can see it's very, it's almost chibi inspired, but it's not quite chibi, which is, which is, it's almost like its own separate style, which is cool. Next up, we've got Beast. I mean, you could get away without painting him and say he's painted. Um, 
I won't, because it's usually a darker blue for the fur, but... I only managed to paint one of these models so far, and that was um, Captain America from the first box. Charles Xavier with his chair. Again, this is the same chair that's used in the 90s X-Men cartoon, the animated series, which is making a comeback, by the way. They're doing a sequel of sorts to it. I'm really looking forward to that. I actually love that show. Then we've got Cyclops. I like this pose, very dynamic, especially when he's sort of going for his visor to shoot his optical blasts. I do love that they've kept the 90s costumes. They haven't transitioned into the current sort of costumes or the, the sort of 2000s costumes, which were kind of more based on the, the movies, which was a bit of a bad choice in my mind. Uh, that's my chair creaking, don't mind that. The storm. Again, the very flowing cape on the back there, but like the wind and clouds underneath. Very dynamic pose on that. I do like the way the cape looks. That's incredible. Uh, that one. And then we've got good old Bub himself, Wolverine. Those claws look lethal. It looks like maybe an explosion or something. It's very prickly. <clears throat> then we've got... Okay, hang on, hang on. Okay. okay, that's a bit of a tight fit with Storm's cloak in that as well. Or cape, whatever you want to call that. Then we've got one of the red models, which is Sabretooth. Oops, I'm dropped in that. <laughs> Slipped out my fingers. So again, going back to the 90s look, which I really didn't like. I remember having a figure of, of this Sabretooth and it looked amazing, like one of the normal sort of action figures, you know. And then Wolverine had his claws, which you could retract in and out of his fist, which was great. And then last but not least for the figures in this box, you've got the Juggernaut. This thing is chunky. Like if I put Wolverine next to him, it's, it's a bit of a chunk, look at that. Incredible. It's got a good weight to it as well. I mean, it's going to be awkward to paint in that helmet, not going to lie. Cool. So that's the core box. <clears throat> a bit disappointed that the inner's kind of splintered or shattered or whatever you might want to call it. But everything else looks intact, which is the main thing, really. Um, okay, put those back in there. Manual back in, put the lid on there. Slide that off to the side there. I'm gonna open the two smaller ones first, <clears throat> just so they're out of the way. I don't want to sort of get knocked over. So I said these are the ones you could only get if you backed uh, the Kickstarter when it was running. I don't think you can get these even if you late pledged. I don't believe. Don't don't quote me on that. I might be wrong. I might be remembering incorrectly. This was like a year ago, but I believe that was what the case was. <clears throat> I was hoping the cards wouldn't be packed because I could show you the small cards, but then... So again, you got Storm Mohawk variant. And we've got the figure. <clears throat> so this is from the Days of Future Past story. Um, I want to say late 80s, mid to late 80s, that one. They did make that the live action film from it as well, which is, which is decent, to be fair. Um, it's one of the better of the X-Men films. I mean, it's not going to get any worse than Last Stand, which is the worst, let's be perfectly honest. Um, and then we've got Old Man Logan. So I don't really know that much about Old Man Logan. I've not read the direct series. I've read some of the stuff where he sort of transitions into the X-Men itself, along with the time-travelling uh, first-class X-Men, as it were, um, which, is, which is pretty good. I thought it was going to be a bit uh, naff when I started reading it, but it actually turns out to be a pretty good sort of series. So again, Old Man Logan... The artwork is phenomenal. I, I don't know if it's one person doing all the art for this or like maybe a multiple people which do the same sort of art style. I don't know. It's incredible. And then Old Man Logan. Again, those claws look deadly. They're really cool. I need to give them a bit of a file because it looks like there's a bit of uh, molding lines on there, but that's fine. You can't expect perfection if you're molding something like that. It's something so dainty and small. It does get a bit difficult. Uh, so next up, I'm going to do the 
mutant promos from the X-Men box, as opposed to the original um, Kickstarter exclusives, because this is all about the X-Men stuff at the moment until we transition to that box. This is, again, this is a really thick one, so this is going to be, I think there's going to be quite a few layers on this one. <clears throat> oh, Rags is here. He's um, bouncing up and down off the table. Put that down like so. What's this? Storage guide back at the box. See, storage guide at the box. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Right. So, tokens. Some extra tokens. Oh, well, that's awkward because that, that band's already snapped and the cards are just kind of gone everywhere. That's not too bad. They're not damaged. Don't look it. They look fine. A little bit of a fold in that corner, but there's nothing major. Okay, so yeah, I'm not going to go through all these cards, but I'll just show off. One is Arcade. And then we've got the other side. So that would be his villain card. There's, there's a lot, like, <laughs> there's a lot. <laughs> and then I'm just going to, and again, I'm not going to show all these, but I'm just going to pull these out to show you. There's another splintering in this box. Wow, that is sheared right through the bottom. Like, that is a big, hefty chunk of cards. Look at that. It's incredible. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, and then let's get to the one there, there. Like that. And that goes on top there. I'm going to slide this up the way. Just put that a second. And then there. Okay, so I'm going to put this three trays in here according to the. Oh my word. <laughs> according to the box. I'm just going to put that there a second. Um, there is space in one of these for that one. So it's gonna hold this out, hopefully the, the light won't shear too much. There's space here for Mohawk Stone and Old Man Logan, which I kind of like the fact that they've taken that into account, but why put them in separate boxes? But then I guess if you're pledging afterwards, you're not gonna, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, here we go. Huh, I'm not gonna remember every single name, so I am gonna be looking at the box if I do need to. Um, there's Avalanche. I'm not going to be quite slow, but I'm not going to be quick with these either. I'm going to try and hit that nice middle point where you can get a good look at the model without losing anything. So there's Deathbird, one of the Shia. Oops. She wants to fly away. It's a very prickly texture on the back of that, which is pretty cool. Then we've got <coughs> Mastermind. Again, with the D thing on the base with this sort of um, part of the stairs or the, the banister there on the back, which is cool. And we've got <clears throat> Callisto, leader of the Morlocks. That's cool. Have a proper look at these after, obviously. Um, Lady Deathstrike, again, in her 90s comic, uh, cartoon and comic um, aesthetic. Very nasty claws. We've got the Shadow King, right with Fez on the top there. <coughs> then we've got Silver Samurai. That sword is really big. <laughs> consider it. Oh, there's a cat on the table. Ah, it's one of my favorites. It'll always be one of my favorites, Omega Red. I always really like this character. And this pose is really good, showing the, the, the um, coils that come out of his wrist. Detail on the face, that's cool. I really like that. <laughs> Uh, then we've got Arcade, who you saw the dashboard for uh, moments ago. Mm, runs Murderland, I believe it's called. It's been a while since I've seen this character, so. 
then we've got Sauron. It's the energy leech kind of mutant. It's <clears throat> the wing spell on that. <coughs> Pyro. Now this is one of the first ones I'm going to be showing with this uh, see-through kind of yellow plastic. Um, it's really cool. It looks really dynamic. And you can see the way the finger sort of reflects through it as well. My fingers are moving it back and forth. I'm, I'm kind of torn by what to do when I'm painting these because I think I might leave the plastic as is, the, um, the see-through plastic as is, and just paint the rest of the model because I, I really like that see-through aesthetic on that. And there's a few of them with that, which you'll, you'll see down the line. Uh, Toad is next. That super long time, that's ridiculously long. <laughs> What's that on there? The Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but on the base, it's got the plaque from Xavier's School. That's really cool. You know, su such a small writing on it, and you can still actually read it. It's really cool, really good, that. Fair play. Uh, the Blob. Gains a chunk. There's quite a weight to this one. Let's see, he's heavier than Juggernaut because of this mass here. That's, whoops. He's a big boy. <clears throat> then we've got Mojo. He was always creepy, this one. Massive tail thing on his chair. Hopefully it stayed in focus with the camera. Because it's quite a tall model, I Back in the box. Then we've got the Brood Queen. Oof, this pointy bits in the back, I can feel it digging in my finger slightly. Look at that, look at that, like razors. <laughs> wings. Shouldn't they didn't make the wings out like a white transparent plastic? Or like a, like a grey clouded kind of plastic? Because that would have suited really well for the wings, I think. <clears throat> ah, Onslaught. It's the creature that came out of a combination of Magneto and Xavier. When Magneto ripped the adamantium from Wolverine's skeleton, Xavier went into his mind to try and uh, kind of, I can't remember if it was to cripple him or if it was to try and take the evil out of him. But this thing spawned up instead after a couple of years and it just wreaked havoc everywhere. Oh, here we go. Here's another see-through plastic one. That's Dark Phoenix. So you see that the, the figure looks really great framed by that like yellowy orange. You can see parts of the, the colouring of the figure coming through. That's amazing. So cool. So that's the first of the way uh, tier. <clears throat> Got some purple characters again there. So next up we have Legion. They did do a TV series based on Legion. It was it was all right. It wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen in the world, but I don't know if I'd want to watch it again. Or maybe I should, I don't know. Uh, it's one of those ones. Emma Frost. It's slipping on my fingers again. And then we've got, so this one, I remember this one being the last uh, stretch goal, it was Marrow, one of the Morlocks. I remember they, we didn't quite reach it. Um, I think it fell short by about $12,000. But they said, you know what? It's been such a great campaign. We're going to give it to you anyway. So here's Marrow. There she is in all her glory with her bones. That's part of her mutant power, by the way. I wasn't making a joke. The, the mutant power is to generate bones and kind of use them as instruments of self-defense, I guess I'd call it. <clears throat> Spiral is next. This is Mojo's uh, assistant. She'd go and kidnap people for Mojo's television syndicate network show that he was doing. And then we've got Namor. So this is a uh, bad guy version, Namor. Looks like the trident's a bit bent. I'm going to have to do the whole um, hot water or uh, hair dryer. Trick on this one, I do that with some of the Steamforge stuff I've had. But again, we've got this blue base, um, which is really cool. Really does look more like water than just having a static plastic colour. Take a quick drink, give me a second, because my throat's going to be dry with all this talking. 
Then we've got Magic. It was part of the New Mutants originally. Um, also not a bad film. It's the last X-Men film we'll get, or X-Men related film we'll get, um, prior to uh, Disney buying Fox. <coughs> um, it wasn't bad. It wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Uh, Sunspot is next. Very good definition on the muscles and that on this one. <laughs> then we've got Warlock. It's a funky looking model. Got razor blade hand or circle of saw blade hands, pretty cool. <clears throat> then we've got Mirage. Again, the arrow looks really cool. And then there's Wolfsbane, who was also in the New Mutants film. That was played by the same actress who played Arya Stark in Game of Thrones, whose name escapes me, Maisie Williams. It's great. Whenever you say it's name, the name escapes me, there it goes. Uh, Havoc is next. That is Scott Summers' uh, brother, a.k.a. Cyclops. Again, look at the muscle definition on that back. It's like he's not missed shoulder day, is he? Damn, dude. Regs agrees. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. Multiple Man has two of the character on the base to show that there's multiple. That's pretty cool. I like that. It's quite a simple thing, but that works to a really good effect. Both different poses, obviously. <coughs> then we have Polaris. Magneto's daughter, one of. This look really great when you've got the green hair highlighted on this model when it's painted. It's really cool. And we've got Strong Guy. One of the original members of X-Force, if I remember correctly. Oh, Rex is just jumping off the table. Apparently he doesn't want to come and join in the video today. Uh, here's Boom Boom. Getting ready to throw one of the... I think it was like a kinetic energy bomb. If I remember correctly. Some of these characters is a bit vague on the details. Then we've got Blink. <coughs> it's quite a popular character in the comics in the late 90s. It's a gap there, so that's not a gap, it's a, a blank piece of thing. This fire star, so again with this uh, see through plastic kind of holding it directly off the base, which is cool. You don't see that on many models, but the way they've done it with the orange plastic looks really cool. <coughs> then we've got Warpath, those are vicious looking knives, fair play. <coughs> And we've got Phantom X. Standing on, looks like a hatch or something. Maybe, it's hard to tell now. And then we've got Feral. <clears throat> And that's another tier done. We're down to the last tier in this particular box. So fit there. Let's pop to the side. Okay. <clears throat> oh, that's cool. Then we've got Kitty Pride phasing through a part of a wall. Rags is like, someone say kitty. I'm a kitty. I just want to get the camera to focus a second. He's having some trouble with this one because there's not a lot of detail to focus. That's cool. Then you can't have Kitty Pride without having, oh wow, there's no actual base, without having Lockheed. And the base is the flame. Um, 
That's cool. <laughs> That's, that's a lot smaller than the others. That's really tiny. <clears throat> then we've got the much sought after in any Marvel Kickstarter um, that goes up. Nightcrawler. Good old Kurt. Get with his Banff smoke. Oops. Banff it on my hand. <coughs> Practicing on a mad one, I think. Uh, Captain Britain. What are you doing, Rags? Who is the brother of Psylocke? <coughs> then we've got Rachel Gray Phoenix. So again, you've got the, the fire in the back in the shape of a Phoenix form. So Rachel Gray being the future, uh, from the future daughter of Scott Summers and Jean Gray. <laughs> Then we've got Dupe, who doesn't speak English, doesn't speak any language in the world, makes his own kind of quirky symbols when he speaks in the comics. We did. I don't know what happened to Dupe, actually. I haven't seen him for a long time. Um, and then if you were lucky enough to have the key, you could work out what he was saying. Everyone always knew what he was saying, though. Just like, okay, cool. Cool beans. Um, oh, okay. Here's Gwenpool. With this weird, like, puppy chart thing. On the bottom here. <laughs> Don't quite know what's going on with that. <laughs> That's kind of funky though. With a, is that a teddy bear uh, bunny backpack? Yeah, looks like it. <coughs> then we've got dagger. I'm going to show from the top first. You see the daggers of light that she's creating and throwing out. And much like Lockheed and Kitty Pride, you can't have dagger without cloak, right? That's going to be a lot of black on that one, I think. They fit together. Yes, they kind of work in tandem. Cool. <clears throat> and we've got Longshot, who was the guy that was always being tormented by Mojo as being a top star of his reality TV syndication thing. <coughs> then we've got Sunfire. Again with the flame column underneath them. Weapon X version of Wolverine with the helmet. Got X-23 as a clone of Wolverine. It's been quite popular. I like the flames in the back of that. It's like she's jumping through a fire. <coughs> and we've got Dazzler, pop star, and mutant. And Pixie. And I feel I could have done some see-through plastic on this one, on the wings, and it would have worked really well. If I remember rightly, she was Welsh. Um, North Star is next. Is, uh, I wonder if his sister's in here somewhere. Not in this box. And we've got Sasquatch. Oof, that's chunky. Good weight to that one as well. Much like the blob from earlier. The strong guy. A definition on that fur detailing. And we've got Puck. <laughs> I like that stance, it's cool. And we've got Guardian. <clears throat> and Snowbird. Okay, so that's everything in these two, this um, stretch goals box. That took a long, longer than I thought it was going to, I'm not going to lie. So please bear with this. If you're still with us, thank you. Um, if you're not, you're never going to hear me say this, so never mind. So pop this back in your stick. Oh, it's going to make a loud noise. So. 
Mm, as well as I thought. Um, it's back in the box there. And then we'll crack into the next one. I'll try and go through the next one a bit quicker, I think. Because I'm very conscious of how long I'm going to keep you guys watching this. And then, so this one is the original game stretch goals box. God, there's a lot in here as well. So there's 40, how many pieces they say on the back of that one? Including Lockheed. Okay, so there's slightly less in this one. So again, there's cards, there's a couple of tokens, there's the villain dashboards. That's a great shot of Venom, I love that. I'm just going to dive straight into the models in this one because we don't, again, we're not going to show those of cards and stuff. Um, so I've got a list of top tray characters. Is there only two? Oh, there's only two trays in this one. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <coughs> okay. So. Everyone's favorite, the most powerful superhero in the Marvel Universe at first, Squirrel Girl. <laughs> like, legit, apparently she's a total badass. I've not really read much of Squirrel Girl, but yeah. Doctor Strange is next. I've seen some funky paint jobs on the uh, magic circles, for lack of a better term, on the hands, which is pretty cool. We've got Vision. Can't believe it's been over a year since WandaVision. That's crazy. Speaking of Wanda, segways. Am I right? Am I right? Scarlet Witch. It's going to be cool to see the new Doctor Strange film that she seems to be uh, quite involved in. Um, Quicksilver. Need to make sure we don't mix these models up because I know there's a Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver in the X Men boxes as well. <laughs> <laughs> there's Okoye it always blows me away that the Black Panther Marvel Cinematic Universe film uh, the actress who plays Okoye in there is Michonne from The Walking Dead then we've got Hawkeye <clears throat> it's more of a modernised Hawkeye because he's got his, his shades on as opposed to the uh, I don't know, mask I guess I call it with a H on the forehead and we've got War Machine. Okay, that's odd. Okay, we have a casualty. I'm missing War Machine's Gatling gun off his back. There's a hole there where it should be. So I have to um, get in touch with the company and say, hey, my guy's missing his guns, guys. Okay. I thought that would do it weird then. It doesn't seem to be in the box. So I'll keep going through. It might be in these one of these, but... Uh, Falcon. <coughs> and we've got good old Ultimate Universe style Nick Fury, a.k.a. Samuel L. Jackson in a board game. And we've got Ms. Marvel, as in Kamala Khan, Ms. Marvel. Can't remember when that series is coming. I know it's coming soonish. I think it might be later this year on Disney Plus. <clears throat> then we've got Corvus Glaive. Usually sort of hangs around with Thanos. We've got oh, another big chunky boy. There's a couple of those coming up. <coughs> Modoc. <coughs> that wicked grin on his face. That was cool. The detailing on the hair on the head. <laughs> uh, speaking of chunky boys, we got the kingpin. Then we've got bullseye. Then we've got Rags playing with something on the floor. <laughs> There's a bit of papers falling out of one of the boxes. <laughs> Another chunky boy, we got the Rhino. Very underrated villain, I thought. I always enjoyed Rhino when he was in the in the books. 
chopping off his horn on the camera. Uh, then we've got Baron Zemo. Right, I'll go back in. Baron Zemo. <clears throat> Interesting to see the way they played Baron Zemo off in Winter Soldier and Falcon. And we've got coming up soon is Kang in the MCU. Obviously, we've seen him a little bit in Loki. He'll be appearing in the Ant Man in the Quantum Verse, I believe it's called. Um, movie coming out at some point. Then we have Carnage. Ah, that's cool. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. There's quite like a mesh texture over him. You can't, I don't know if they'll see it in post when I'm editing, but um, this Venom is next. <coughs> see the detailing with the spider symbol on the back. It's on the front as well. It might be a bit harder to pick up on that one. Then we've got Hella. One of the gods. And in this last in this particular layer is Dormammu, Doctor Strange's nemesis. Or one of. There's a bit of a separation on the shoulder there. I'll be able to fill that. Cool, so that's the top tray. And then the bottom tray we have, hello guys, eh? we've got Iron Fist. <clears throat> and we have Electra. Ooh, that's quite sharp. One of my favourites, Daredevil. Got an issue of Daredevil somewhere signed by Alex Maleev. I think it's still in storage at my, uh, my mother's house. Luke Cage is up next. Looks like they've kind of grouped a lot of the, like, the defenders and uh, the teams together, like Alpha Flight was together in the X-Men one. Jessica Jones. <clears throat> I always thought Jessica Jones was a bit overrated personally, but that's just me. She's one of my all time favorites. Good old Frank Castle, the Punisher. I don't care what they do in the books now, that skull is always going to be the Punisher skull. I don't care what they say. We have Mockingbird. And Spider Woman. <coughs> the way the webbing on the, the cape be kind of on the armpit bits looks. That's pretty cool. And we've got Shang-Chi. I quite enjoyed that, uh, the recent film they did. I say recent film, the only film they did. Uh, <laughs> then we've got Spider-Man 2099. Good old Miguel O'Hara. So many Spider-Man in these boxes. Then we've got an alternate sculpt for Venom. This is like the hero sculpt. Whereas the previous one you've seen is obviously the villain one because it was red. Because <clears throat> you could use either for either, but uh, that's the way they've sort of separated them in the box. <coughs> and we've got Black Cat. Just checking the clothes. Look like the fingers are kind of misshapen, but I think it's just the way that the one that's kind of holding her hand. Um, next up, we've got America Chavez. Some sort of star thing on the base. 
quite sure what that is, but that's cool. Uh, then we've got She-Hulk. Again, that's another series that they're doing. There's been some leaked artwork um, over the weekend, potentially showing what the character's going to look like. <clears throat> ah, coming later this month, another one of the underrated ones, in my opinion, is Moon Knight. This series looks dark, and it looks fantastic. That's quite a chunky base. The base is what adds to the chunk on this one. That's really cool. And we've got <coughs> Blade, the Daywalker. The stake in his hand, the sword in the other. Flat top. <laughs> and we've got get the Blade back in the box. Um, Ghost Rider. I'm not sure this is. Johnny Blaze or Danny Ketch. I'm not entirely certain which version this is. It might be a different one. I haven't read Ghost Rider in quite a few years, unfortunately. Adam Warlock. Quite a big base, smallish, well, normal size model, but the base is what makes this chunky. <coughs> then we're starting to go into more of the spacey characters. So we've got Nova. Yeah, with this one, I'm not sure if it's the, I can't remember his name, it's the, the teenage boy Nova or if it's Richard Ryder Nova. I would kind of think, I kind of hope it's, it's Richard Ryder just because I've read more of that than I have the, the, the current Nova. We have Nebula, Gamora's sister. There's Mantis, with a little antenna. It's pretty cool. Recently finished playing the Guardians of the Galaxy game, which came out in October. That's a fantastic game. Speaking of the Guardians of the Galaxy, another one is Drax. God, he's chunky, look at that. He did not miss any day at the gym. Oops. <laughs> then we've got Howard the Duck. <laughs> it's just quackers. Bay. I heard Leanne groaning from the side there. That. Yeah, there's a half. And then last in this box then is Yondu. Adam Warlock and Yondu are included in the Stretch Goals box, but much like the Mohawk Storm and Old Man Logan, you could only originally get those if you backed on Kickstarter. You can't get them anywhere else. They've included them in this one, which is great. Um, so, yeah, so that's the full set of those. So that's everything in the X-Men Core box, the uh, Marvel uh, Mutant Promos box, and the Marvel United Stretch Goals box or the Marvel promos box, as it were. So this will be the end of part two. I had to think about that one. This will be the end of part two. Part three will be dropping probably tomorrow, so we're probably going to upload one per day, not to not burn everyone out. Hmm? This is part one. It's part two. The over, um, overall unboxing is part one. Oh, no, no, it's part... The same video. Yeah, it is. I'm losing track, because we can't... This is why I don't like that thing, because it confuses me. Part two... <laughs> yeah. So we're looking to probably drop one each day leading through the week. So hopefully we'll get this up tonight after we finish recording. Then the next few days we'll have subsequent videos coming up. So please look forward to that. Um, as always, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. You're guaranteed to know when parts two, three, and four go up as well. Um, not part one, because this is what you're watching now. Got it right that time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, hit the like button, hit the comments button. Did you um, get the game? Did you play the original game? Did you pick up the X-Men one? Let us know in the comments below. All the social stuff is below in the in the, in the usual place in the description. Um, yeah, that's me signing off for now, and we'll see you in part two.